I bring you greetings from Nairobi. Naoletea salamu kutoka Nairobi from your brothers in Nairobi. Kwa ndugu zenu kutoka Nairobi. Amen. Amen. And from my own family. Na jamii yote. They send me to greet you. Pia waliwasalimu sana. I take it as a great privilege to be here today. Ninachukua fursa kuwa fursa kuu sana kuwa hapa. As my dear brother says when we met last year in September we just loved one another. Vile ndugu kwamba tulikutana mwezi wa 9 mwaka ujao tukapendana na tukacheka pamoja. Amen. Amina. One thing I love is the boldness of your bishop. Kitu moja napenda ni ile ujasiri askofu alio from the time I met him, I've seen him bring many servants of God to speak to his people. Na wakati lipokuta na ye, ni maona kileta watu mishi wengi wakuja kunea na watu waki. It is only a man who has confidence towards God who can do that. Na ni mtu tu alie na ujasiri kwa mungu ni anezafanya hivu. Because we like protecting our small flocks. Unajua tunapenda kuchunga kondo yetu ndogo. That if someone else speaks to them that he may bring something different. Yani mtu wakinena na wawo unafikiri ya taleta kitu tofauti. But if you have confidence towards God. Lakini ukua na ujasiri kwa mungu. Knowing that the church belongs to Jesus Christ. Wamba kanisa ni la Yesu Christo. You allow the people God leads you to to speak to your people. Utakubali watumishu wa mungu wa nene na watu wa mungu. Because we are gifted differently. Maana sisi tunavipawa tofauti tofauti. And therefore bishop I salute you for your confidence. Kwa hivyo askofu tunakupa saluti kwa ujasiri wako. The bishop stood here. The askofu wa lesimama hapa. He has given us the theme. Amesha tupa kichwa kitambo. In 2 Timothy 2.15. Timothy wa pili mbili kuminatano. So all of us will begin there. Sisu ya tuanzie hapo. Because the bishop wants us to begin there. Maana askofu sasa nataka kupe tuanzie hapo. But before you open the Bible let me say this. Lakini kabla tuingie kwa bibilio cha niseme hivi. I want to give you two analogies. It doesn't happen in Kitale. In Nairobi, we have seen beautiful flats up to about seven floors. Nairobi, to me ona magorofa mrefu mpaka ile ya saba. Well painted. Zime pakwa rangi vizuri. If you go inside, the tiles are appealing. Ukienda ndani, unapata zile tiles zinafraisha. But after some time, lakini baade ya muda, you find it falling down. Unaona zinaanguka. The paint is good. Rangi mepakwa vizuri. The finishing is superb. Wamemalizia vizuri kabisa. But a nice flat like that one falls down. Lakini gorofa mzuri kama hiyo jengo inaanguka chini. And I began asking myself. Naanza kujiuliza. What happens to these houses that they fall? Nini kinafanyika hii gorofa yanguke? What brings a beautiful tall flat to come down? Nini usababisha gorofa mrefu inaporomoka? Then I discovered that the strength of a building is not in the painting. Nikatambua kwamba nguvu ya gorofa sio rangi. It's on the foundation. Ni msingi. However much you paint it beautiful, hata kama umepaka rangi vizuri sana, and it has a wrong foundation, na msingi wake ni mbaya, it will come down. Itaporomoka. It doesn't matter how long. Haijalishi takao muda gani, but it will definitely come down. Itaanguka siku moja. Unfortunately, kwa bahati mbaya, many ministries all over the world, they are beautifully painted. Jengo nyingi zimepakwa rangi vizuri but no foundation. Lakini msingi hamna. And that's why jo sababu they can't stand the floods and storms of life. Hazwezi kusimama garika na misuko siku ya maisha. It's only a ministry that is laid on the foundation of Christ Jesus. Ni uduma tu peke yake iliweka katika msingi wa Yesu Kristo. Who is our rock? Ambaye ni mwamba wetu that can stand the test of time. Ineza simama wakati wa majaribu. Praise be to Jesus. Bana sifiwa. I am confident nina ujasiri that that's what Bishop wants. Na hivyo nivile askofu anataka. When you see him inviting different ministers here ukiona na karibisha wa ubiri tofautofauti hapa. He's bringing different skills of builders. Analeta ujuzi wa wajenzi tofautofauti to see if he can establish this ministry aone kama hii uduma inaweza kuimarishwa on the right foundation. Karika msingi imara. Maybe today he has brought a different kind of minister. Pengine leo unezoona umubiri tofauti but the Lord knows the ministry needs him. Mungu anajua uduma gani lionda ni mwake. Every kind of machinery you see around a construction site. Ukiona zile vyombo vya kujenga mashina ambazo ziko katika mahali pa kujengea. It is useful. Zinatumika. Even a wheelbarrow. Hata yeah. wheelbarrow that you must push for it to serve you. 
lazima uisukume ndiye kutumikie is still useful pia inatumika Praise Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. For you to benefit from what I'll be doing here for these two days. Kwa wewe kufaidika kwa kile nitafanya kwa siku hizi mbili. You must have your Bible. Wewe na Biblia yako, a notebook, wewe na kitabu, and a pen. Wewe na kalamu inayoandika, and your brains. Na akili yako iweke hapa hapa. When I'm ministering, ninapohudumu, I don't like people leaving their brains outside. Sitaki watu wanaacha akili yao nje samahani. I want you to come with your brains. Akili yako uibebe ukuje naye. So that if I say something that you don't understand, nikisema kitu ambacho hautakifahamu, you can question me. Unaweza kuuliza swali. When you question me, unaponiuliza swali, you are not interfering with the anointing. Ha, si atu na unataka kuharibu upako. You can't interfere with the anointing of God upon me. Hautaharibu upako lio juu yangu. And when you question Unapoliza I know you have been listening. Najua kumbe ulikuwa unanisikiza. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. So let's go where Bishop took us. Wacha tuende mahali asikofa ametufikisha. 2 Timothy. Timotheo wa pili. Chapter 2 verse 15. 2:15. But allow me to go back a little bit to verse 11 so that we read up to verse 18. Wacha tu tuanzie 11 tuende mpaka 18. The Bible says this is a faithful saying for if we died with him we shall also live with him. If we endure we shall also reign with him if we deny him he also will deny us if we are faithless he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself verse 14 remind them of these things charging them before the lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers verse 15 Be diligent to present yourself approved to God a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth verse 16 but shun profane and idle babblings for they will increase to more ungodliness verse 17 and their message will spread like cancer Hymenas and Philetus are of this sort verse 18 who have strayed concerning the truth saying that the resurrection is already past and they overthrow the faith of some praise jesus verse 15 says that study to show yourself approved unto god 15 nasema jitahidi kujionyesha kuwa umekubaliwa mbele za mungu is a call to your personal input hiyo ni mwito wa wewe kujiwekea ndani that you need to study kwamba unastahili kujifunza for you to study you must present yourself before a teacher yani kwa wewe kujifunza vizuri lazima ujipeleke mbele ya mwalimu and we know our best teacher is the holy spirit na tunajua mwalimu aliye bora ni roho mtakatifu so you must present yourself to the ministry of the holy spirit kwa hivyo lazima ujitolee katika huduma wa roho mtakatifu and to the servants of god that the holy spirit is using in the ministry of teaching na kwa watumishi wa mungu ambao roho mtakatifu anatumia katika huduma ya kufundisha you study unajifunza To study you must understand what you are learning. Kujifunza lazima uelewe unajifunza nini. You must acknowledge it as true. Lazima ukubali kwamba ni kweli and you must believe it. Na lazima uamini. When you believe it, ukiamini, then you must be ready to apply it in your life. Na uwe tayari kuweka katika matendo kwa maisha yako. You learn the word of God. Unajifunza neno la Mungu. You understand it. Unafahamu. You acknowledge it as true. Unakubali kwamba ni kweli. You believe it. Unaamini. That this is the word of God for me. Kwamba neno la Mungu juu yangu. And now, alafu you apply it in your life experiences. Unaiweka katika hali ya maisha yako yote. The problem with our church these days. Shida ya makanisa yetu siku hizi. They are so rich in knowledge. Wana maarifa mengi sana. But very poor in application. Lakini kutenda kazi ni mbaya sana. People can quote scriptures. Watu wanaweza nukulu maandiko. But if you look at their lifestyles. Lakini ukiangalia maisha yao. Their lifestyle never quote any scripture. Maisha yao hata ionyeshe andiko hata moja. What you believe kile unachoamini you must live lazima uishie if you can't live what you believe kama uwezi ishi kile unachoamini then there was no reason for you to learn it at all waiva kukwa na sababu ya kutosha wewe kujifunza study jifunze and the bible says when you study you show yourself as approved to god ndio nasema unapojitahidi kujionyesha unajionyesha mbele za mungu so let's just start thinking at this moment because we came with our brains hebu tuanze kufikiria kidogo kwa sababu ulibeba tulibeba akili zetu is only when you study 
Unapotujifunza but you show yourself approved of God. In other words, kwa maneno mengine, if you are a believer, kama ni muumini, a minister of the gospel, when ni muduma wa injili, who does not study, asiyejifunza then you are not approved of God. Kwa hivyo wewe haukubaliwi mbele za Mungu. And what happens to you? Nini ufanyika kwako? Look at verse 16. What happens to you if you are not studying? Nini ufanyika kwako usipojifunza neno? You have idol babblings. Unakuwa na maneno yasiyofaa. Which increase in more and godliness. Ambaye inaongezeka alafu ungu inapungua. That's why when you enter the pulpit, you have no word of God. So you just begin babbling things that are idol. Unaanza kuongea maneno ambayo hayafai. That make your hearers more ungodly. Inafanya maisha yako inakuwa haina uungu kabisa. So there are many men of God standing on the pulpit. Kwa hivyo kuna kwa watumishi wa Mungu wengi wamesema katika madhara. Making the congregations more evil than they found them. Inawafanya kanisa inakuwa uovu kuliko vile vilivyopata. Because they have rejected the study of the word of God. Maana wamekataa kujifunza neno la Mungu. If you are a servant of God. Kama wewe ni mtumishi wa Mungu kamili, you must purpose to put yourself under the study of the word of God. Lazima ukusudie kujiweka katika chini ya mafundisho ya neno la Mungu. So do your best. That's NIV. Do your best. NIV inasema jitahidi sana. New King James says be diligent. Yaani King James anasema kuwa na bidii. Original King James says study to show yourself. Ingia King James mpya anasema kwamba jifunze saidi. It's not saying God will do it for you. Haijasema Mungu atakufanyia. God has given you the word. Mungu amekupa neno. He wants you to study it. Anataka ujifunze. I was born in a family of a pastor. Nimezaliwa katika jamii ya mchungaji. Although I never dreamed to be a pastor one day but you know never know the things of God. Ikapokuwa siku moja sikuwahi wote nitakuwa mchungaji lakini nilifanyika. I never saw my father study the word of God. Sikuwaiona baba yangu akijifunza neno la Mungu. He used to go to that church with his Bible. Alikuwa anaenda kanisani na Biblia kama. But when he is called to preach he'll open it. Akiitwa kuhubiri anabahatisha tu anaifungua katika. On the right. Na mkono tu That's where the Holy Spirit wants him to preach from. Na anasema hapa ni Roho Mtakatifu anataka kuhubiri tu hapo. Idol babblings. Praise God. Bwana sifiki. So Bible says if you study you will show yourself approved unto God. Inasema unapojifunza unajitahidi unakubaliwa mbele za Mungu. How are you approved? Wewe unadhibitishwa haje. That you are a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Yule mfanyikazi asiyehitaji kuaibika. So let's go slowly again. First of all you study. Ya kwanza unajifunza. Number two, you are approved. Ya pili unakubaliwa. Then number three, you are a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Ya tatu unakuwa mfanyikazi asiyehitaji kutayarishwa. So let's see again. Hebu tuangalie. If you don't study, usipojifunza, you are not approved of God. Wewe haukubaliwi mbele za Mungu. And you are a workman full of shame. Wewe ni mfanyikazi mwenye anaibika. Do you know most of us will preach? Then you go to your house. Even your own conscience condemns you. For I'm the only one. Even your own conscience. Tells you what nonsense is that you are doing. Why are you lying to the people of God? If you didn't know it, why didn't you just shut up? You are alone. And your own conscience is talking to you. What you said is a lie. It's not true. Why do you continue doing this? You have a conference with yourself. A workman who does not need to be ashamed. Now look at it. What does that workman do? He rightly divides the word of truth yeye tayari hubambanua na kueleza neno la Mungu vizuri now that's where all the problems are hapo hali shida zote zinatokea rightly dividing the word of truth kupambanua na kueleza neno la Mungu vizuri let's look at one bad example here kuna mfano mbaya ambao Mungu anatoa hapa of people who are not rightly dividing the word of truth praise jesus anasifiwe verse 17 he says kuna sababu anasema hivi and their message will spread like cancer na neno lao litaenea kama donda ndugu. And he gives names of two men who are like that. Imeeleza watu wawili wana aina hiyo. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort. Imaneo na Fileto ni watu wa aina hiyo. Now look at it. Hebu angalia hivi. 
their message spreads like cancer. Yaani ujumbe wao unasambaza kama donda ndugu. Do you know why? Unajua kwa nini? We are living in very unique time. Tunaishi nyakati za ajabu where people don't want truth. Watu hawataki ukweli even the churches we preach to. Hata makanisa tunayohubiri they don't want truth. Hawataki ukweli. If you dare preach the truth, ukijaribu kuhubiri ukweli, you will be left with very few people in that church. Utabakishwa na watu wachache hapo kanisani. If bishop puts a poster in town there. Askofu akiweka poster hapa mjini. Says bring all the sick. Anasema leta wagonjwa wote. The lame will walk. Viwete watakimbia. You will not have a place to put people. Hautakuwa na mahali pa kuweka watu. But come and learn the word of God. Lakini kuja kujifunza neno la Mungu. Nobody wants that. Hakuna mtu anataka kujifunza. The few people who can sit down to learn the word of God. Wachache watakaokaa chini kujifunza neno la Mungu. They are blessed of God. Ni wale wamebarikiwa na Mungu. So there are men here kuna watu hapa wawili Hymenaeus and Philetus Hymenaeus and Phileto who are not studying to show themselves approved unto God hawajifunzi hawajakubaliwa mbele za Mungu who are workmen that are ashamed hawa ni wafanyikazi wenye wanaibika because they are not dividing the word of truth maana hawaelezi neno la Mungu vizuri so what is their problem what are they saying shida yao nini wanasema nini hapa in verse 18 they have strayed concerning the truth Waliikosa ile kweli. They are saying that the resurrection is already past. Wakisema kwamba kiyama imekwisha kuwapo and they overthrow the faith of many. Hata kuipindua imani ya watu wengi kadha wa kadha. Now pay your attention here. Hebu sasa chunguza hapa vizuri. Himaneas, Himaneo and Philetus they are cheating people. Na Phileto wanawadanganya watu. That resurrection is something that is past. Kwamba ufufuo ulipita kitambo. What is their problem? They don't understand the timeline of God. They have no idea what God is doing. Is there resurrection in the Bible? Yes. Has it passed? No. Imetimia bado. Does Philetus and Himanias know? They don't know. Phileto na Meneo wanajua hawajui. What is their problem? They are not studying. Shida yao ni nini? Hawajifunze Biblia. Like right now, kama sasa hivi. If I came here and told you, ningekuja hapa niwaambie, we need to look for a garden somewhere. Tutafute shamba mahali, remove all our clothes, tutue manguo zetu zote, be like Adam and Eve, tuishi kama Adam na Hawa and go and live in that bush. Twende tuishi kwa hiyo msituni. Is that found in the Bible? Iko kwa Bible. No, Adam and Eve lived in the bush. They didn't have clothing. Adam na Is it in the Bible? Iko Bible? Is it an instruction to the church? Ni ishara Mungu anaeleza kanisa. How will you know that is not an instruction to the church? Utajuaje ni kama Mungu ajaambia kanisa? Study to show yourself approved and God. Unasoma kujua kile Mungu anasema. So things are in this Bible. Vitu viko kwa hii Biblia. Apply to different people. Ambavyo vinatendea watu tofauti. At different times of human history. Na wakati historia tofauti and there are specific things na kuna vitu ambavyo vya udani that are applied to the church ambavyo ni vya kanisa and they have never been applied to anybody else ambavyo si vya kila mtu mwingine praise god bwana asifiwe in essence katika hali hiyo let's just go back a little bit to Ephesians chapter 3 hebu turudi katika waefeso 3 verse 1 to 3 waefeso 3 moja na mpaka 3 the bible says for this reason I Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles if we indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you verse 3 how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already now listen to what Paul is saying hebu sikia na Mungu ninasema He's telling the Ephesians believers that I am an apostle of God to you. Mimi ni mtume wa Mungu juu yenu. Number two, ya pili, God has given me a mystery. Mungu amenipa siri. I like the Swahili part of siri, eh? Yeah. A mystery. Amenipa siri. So let's think. Hebu tufikirie kidogo. If God has given apostle Paul a mystery for Kama the church kama Mungu amempa mtume Paulo siri kwa kanisa Is it a mystery for Eve and Adam? Che, ni siri ya Adam na Hawa. So Adam and Eve they had their message. Kwa hivyo Adam na Hawa walikuwa na ujumbe wao wakati wao. 
Abraham and his children they had their message. Ibrahim na watoto wake walikuwa na ujumbe wao. The nation of Israel had their message. Taifa la Israeli likuwa na ujumbe wao. And now the church has its message. Sasa kanisa lina ujumbe wake. And Paul calls it a mystery. Na Paulo anasema ni siri. Hidden truth ile ukweli uliofika that has now been revealed sasa imefunuliwa is no longer secret sio siri tena it was a secret ilikuwa siri until it was given to paul mpaka ilipopeana kwa paulo so to me and you kwa hivyo wewe na mimi it is no longer secret sio siri tena it was a kept a secret for some people ilikuwa imewekwa siri kwa watu wengine but now for me and you lakini kwa kwa wewe na mimi is revealed truth imefunuliwa ni ukweli i know the philosophy of this church Najua filosofia ya pengine mko nayo kanisa. I've seen down here. Nimeona hapa that you know the truth. Unajua ukweli and the truth sets you free. Na ukweli utakuweka huru. So this church is on the right foundation. Kwa hivyo hii kanisa liko katika msingi unaofaa. You are seeking and teaching the truth. Mnatafuta na kufundishwa ukweli because only the truth can set a man free. Unajua ni ukweli peke yake unaweza mtu awe huru. Maybe the question we need to ask ourselves free from what? Kwa hivyo swali ni tujiulize wenyewe uhuru kutoka kwa nini? Free from your traditions and cultures. Uhuru kutoka katika tamaduni za kwenu. Free from sin. Uhuru kutoka kwa dhambi. Free from religion. Uhuru kutoka kwa dini. The truth does not set you free to do what you want. Ukweli haujikuweka huru ufanye unachotaka. It sets you free from captivity. Inakutoa katika kifungo unakuwa huru. Some of us are captive of our cultures. Wengine wenu tumefungwa tume na tamaduni. I had a very good friend of mine. Nikuwa na rafiki yangu mzuri from Bungoma toka Bungoma and he told me he cannot take his children to hospital for circumcision. Akasema hawezi kupeleka watoto wake hospitali wakati huo. I asked him why. Nikamwambia kwa nini ndugu? He told me tradition. Akasema tamaduni. I said whether you take them home, kuwapeleka nyumbani or any hospital, ama hospitali, to miss the same. Yote kwangu ni sawa. But he says no culture. Akasema tamaduni. So the truth comes to set you from captivity ukweli inakuja na kuweka huru kutoka kwa kifungo of culture kwa tamaduni of religion kwa udini of tradition and of sin alafu dhambi sets you free inakuweka huru and the bible says if the son sets you free bia nasema mwana akikuweka huru you are free indeed unakuwa huru kweli kweli praise be to jesus bwana asifiwe so paul says here paulo anasema hapa I have a special message for the church. Niko na ujumbe maalum kwa kanisa. Let's just continue reading down. I want verse 9 but let's read down. Tuzalamuke chini kidogo. By which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So you see the mystery is what? Mnaona siri ni nani? Kristo. Are you seeing it? Sijui kama mnaona. So the mystery of the church is who? Jesus Christ. Siri ya kanisa ni nani? Ni Yesu Kristo. So every time you see Christ in place na wakati unapomuona Yesu mahali then you know the church is in that place utajua kanisa kumbe liko hapa before jesus was born Be, kabla yesu kuzaliwa or before the incarnation of christ jesus kabla yesu kufunuliwa there was nothing called the church hakukuwa na kitu kinaitwa kanisa amen amina i know the bible talks about the congregation that met in the wilderness ene la mungu linasema pia kwamba ile kanisa iliyotoka mstuni because the word for the church maana neno la kanisa is ecclesia which has means the call out ones yani neno la kanisa kitambo ni ecclesia inamaanisha wale walioitwa kutoka nje and ecclesia is not a spiritual word neno ecclesia si ya kiroho is a word that uh, rome used ni neno ambalo warumi walitumia when the emperor call his officials to talk to them wakati emperor waita wale wakuu wake waje pamoja it was the assembly of the call out ones ilikuwa ni mkusanyiko wa wale walioitwa so the word ecclesia just means the call out ones kwa hivyo neno ecclesia inamaanisha tu wale walioitwa so when you see it used over israel in the wilderness ukiona natumiwa kwa israel pale jangwani it does not mean that israel was the church haimaanishi kwamba israel ilikuwa kanisa they were just a congregation of the call out ones ilikuwa tu ni watu wamekusanyika walioitwa pamoja how do i know this is true Najuaje kama ni kweli? Jesus speak to his own disciples. Yesu akiambia wanafunzi wake wenyewe. He told them. Akawaambia, there's a time that is coming. Kuna wakati unakuja when I will build my church. Nitalijenga kanisa langu. Have you ever read that? Umaisoma yes. hapa I will nita build my church. Nitalijenga kanisa langu. Think about it. Hebu fikiria kidogo. He never said I am building my church. Hasemi ninajenga kanisa langu. And he was there in Israel. 
na alikuwa pale Israeli preaching to them akiwahubiria repent for the kingdom of god is near tubuni ufalme wa mbinguni umefika when they rejected him walipomkata when they said that his demon possessed wakasema huko na pepo he said okay kasema sawa then i will build my church so nitajenga kanisa langu basi so during the earthly time of christ jesus wakati wa yesu alipokuwa hapa duniani he was not building the church hakuwa anajenga kanisa he had come to offer the kingdom to israel alikuwa amekuja kupeana ufalme kwa israeli but he knew they reject him alijua watamkata and he says since you have rejected me akasema kwa sababu mmenikata i will set you apart for some time nitaweka kando kwa muda fulani and do something new na nifanye kitu kipya i will nita build my church nitajenga kanisa langu jesus begins to build his church yesu kristo anaanza kujenga kanisa lake after the cross baada ya msalaba Before the cross there's no church. Kabla ya msalaba hakuna kanisa. And that's why ndio sababu the 12 apostles wale mitume 12 could not understand Jesus. Hawangeweza kufahamu. So he picked his own apostle akachukua wale wachache. Call Paul anaitwa Paulo. Put him in a desert somewhere. Akamweka jangwani for three years. Kwa miaka mitatu. Gave him a mystery. Akampa siri to, to the church. Ya kupeana kanisa. Even Peter himself approves Paul. Hata Peter mwenyewe anadhibitisha Paulo. Peter approves. Anamkubali. Peter who walked with Jesus. Petero aliyetembea na Yesu. For three and a half years. Kwa miaka mitatu na nusu. He listens to Paul speaking. Anasikia Paulo anaongea. He says I've never heard something like this. Akasema kitu kama hizi sijawahi kusikia mimi. Okay. Sawa. <laughs> Let's go to 2 Peter 3 verse 16, eh? Petero wa 2:16. <laughs> Are you seeing a group of men there? Unaona kikundi cha watu hapo? What are they called? Wanaitwaje? They are learned. Wasiosoma and taught. Mm. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Hebu jifunze ujithibitishe mbele za Mungu. So these are men who don't study. Hao watu wako wanachosoma neno. That's why they are untaught. Ndio sababu wanaandikwa pale hawaelewi. What are they doing? Wanafanya nini? Now, let's read from verse 15. Tuanzie 15. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him has written to you. Nanyi uhesabuni uvumilivu wa Bwana wetu kuwa ni wokovu kama vile na ndugu yetu mpenzi Paulo aliviandikia kwa hekima aliyopewa. Hold on. Ongali. I will build my church. Nitajenga kanisa langu. And Peter is the one who stole. Na Petro anaambiwa feed my sheep. Hebu ulisha kondo zangu. Take care of the sheep. Chunga kondo zangu. But now he has seen another man speaking. Sasa mtu mwingine ananena. He says although I was told to feed the sheep. Anasema ijapokuwa niliambiwa nilishe kondoo. But my brother Paul. Lakini ndugu yangu Paulo huyu has written things. Ako na vitu vya ndani. You know it's good to submit. Unajua ni vizuri kunyenyekea. Peter says I have walked with Christ Jesus. Petro anasema nimetembea na Kristo. I have experienced him. I know him personally. Namjua kwa undani. I have ate with him. Nimekula na yeye. But my brother Paul. Lakini ndugu yangu huyu Paulo. Ha. Amen. Na mambo. Praise Jesus. Bana sifiwe. He has written some things. Ameandika vitu vya ndani according to the wisdom given to him kulingana na ekima aliyopewa so peter acknowledges kwa hivyo petero anakubali that the writings of paul is according to the wisdom kwamba maandiko ya paulo ni ekima aliyopewa now what is wisdom ekima ni nini wisdom is knowledge applied hii ni ile ujuzi ama ni ile maarifa uliyofundishwa unaitembea kazi ndio ekima knowledge applied yani ni ujuzi ama ni maarifa uliyopewa unaitendea so kazi. So when Peter listens to Paul speaking, wakati Petro anasikia Paulo akiongea, he knows this man has knowledge of what he's talking about. Anajua huyu jamaa ako na maarifa ile vitu anaongelea. He speaks and acts according to knowledge. Anatenda na kuongea kulingana na maarifa aliyonayo. That's wisdom. Hiyo ni hekima. That's why everybody is assumed wise. Ndio sababu kila mtu anadhaniwa mwenye hekima until he speaks or acts. Mpaka anavyoongea na kutenda. Is when you speak and act that you expose your foolishness. Unapoongea na kutenda ndio wanajua kumbe wewe ni mjinga. But you are just quiet. Lakini kama umenyamaza tu hivi. People say you are a wise man. Wanasema huyu mtu ana hekima. Hey. Akosawa. <laughs> so <laughs> 
So Peter says according to the wisdom given to him. Because he has listened to the message and lifestyle of Paul. He sees Christ in those messages. Then he says in verse 16. As also in all his epistles. Speaking in them of these things. In which are some things hard to understand. Kumbe na sasa vile vile kama katika nyaraka zake zote pia akitoa humo habari za mambo hayo katika nyaraka hizo yamo mambo ambayo ni vigumu kuelewa nayo. That is Peter. Hiyo ni Petero anaandika the apostle of Jesus Christ. Hiyo ni mitume wa Yesu Kristo. He is saying anasema some things Paul has written. Vitu vingine Paulo ameandika they are hard to understand. Ni vigumu kuelewa. They are hard to understand. But it says the only way you can understand is when you study. Are you hearing? Because he says there are many here who are uneducated and taught. Anasema kuna wengine hapa mjafundishwa hata mjasoma. Now because they don't understand, na kwa sababu wafahamu, they twist them. Wanazizungusha na kuzifinya. Since I don't know it, na kwa sababu sijui, they twist them. Wanazifunga. Wanapindua ukweli. People use scriptures watu tumia maandiko to say what they wanted to say kusema kile wanataka kusema you first of all you have a message kwanza una ujumbe then you look for a scripture to back your message na unatafuta andiko kia moja katika hiyo that's not the way to preach sio njia kuhubiri preach unahubiri you allow the scriptures to talk unakubali maandiko ya nene so if you are a minister of the gospel first of all study the bible allow the message to come from the scriptures not you to put your message in the scriptures so unschooled men they twist this truth that paul has male ukweli ambao paulo ako nayo and the bible says not only paul's uh, scriptures Paulo peke yake they do it to all other scriptures na maandiko mengine wanaifanyia mambo yao to their own destruction kwa sababu ya mangamizia that's the only good part hiyo ndio sehemu nzuri tu they destroy themselves by doing that wanajaribu wenyewe kwa kutumia maandiko vibaya they are not destroying other people hawangamizi watu wengine they are destroying themselves wenyewe wanajiangamiza kumbe so the best way to destroy yourself as a preacher kwa hivyo njia nzuri ya kujimaliza kama mtumishi wa Mungu is to corrupt the word of god ni kuwa Mungu na kuwekea vitu vyako Umejimaliza eh? Umejimaliza. <laughs> so let's go back to Ephesians where we were reading. Chapter 3. So, maalikuwa tunasoma Ephesians chapter 3 again. Let me read from verse 1 again up to verse 5 because I want you to get something here. For this reason I Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly already written by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ now look at verse 5 angalia tano the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets so there is a time wao kuna wakati that the truth about the church ambao kweli kuhusu kanisa was not made known to the sons of men haikuwa imejulikana kwa watu wa duniani so think about it hebu fikiria kidogo all the old testament prophets wale manabii wote wa gano la kale whether major or minor prophets wao wale wakubwa na wadogo they never understood anything about the church hawakuelewa chochote kuhusu kanisa hata kidogo Read through your Bible. Hebu soma Biblia yako. The farthest they could see bali yenye wangeona is the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Ni kufufuka tu kwa Yesu Kristo. Then they got blind. Alafu wanakuwa vipofu. They saw his coming again. Wanaona kurudi kwake tena. Because the church was the secret of God. Maana kanisa ilikuwa ni siri ya Mungu. You are a treasure to God. Wewe ni mtu wa dhamani mbele za Mungu. He could never even allow Isaiah to know about you. Hata angekubali Isaiah ajue kukuhusu wewe. He knew about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Alijua kurudi kwa Yesu Kristo. His suffering, ile mateso yake. His death, kifo chake. His burial, kuzikwa. His resurrection, kufufuka. His ascension, when I choose. Then they saw his coming back. Alafu akaona kurudi kwake tena. Not the church. Si kanisa hakuona. There is no message about you from Isaiah. Hakuna ujumbe kukuhusu wewe kutoka katika kitabu cha Isaiah. I know you like the fire of Elijah. Najua unapenda moto wa Elia wewe. The fire of Elijah is not about you. E moto wa Elia hata ikuhusu wewe. 
We say it rightly divided the word of truth. Then let's put every scripture where it belongs. Fire. Leave it that way, Elijah. You have something better than that fire. Okay, let me open your eyes, Father. There is no single human being in the Old Testament. Hakuna manadamu yote katika agano la kali. Before the cross. Kabla msalaba who was indwelled by the presence of God. None. Even Abraham. A friend of God. None. Even Moses. The Lord Kiba. Not Moses. Even Elijah. The man of fire. Not him. Even Isaiah. The great prophet. Zero. Zero. God comes to choose you to come and live in you. Mm. During the times of Elijah and Isaiah, God was in a box. In the Holy of Holies. When Christ died on the cross, the curtain was torn. Not for you to go in the Holy of Holies. But God came out of the Holy of Holies to come to live in you. So I want you to hear this. What was the name of the place God was living? The Holy of Holies. Because where God is, is the Holy of Holies. Are you getting it? Where does God live now? Where does he live? So where is the Holy of Holies? A privilege that was not available to the nation of Israel. And it's a mystery. Siri. The prophets never knew anything about it. First chapter 1 verse 10. Let's go verse by verse. Eh? So concerning so may I Yes. Napenda Kiswahili hapo. Verse 10. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Petero wa kwanza 1 kumi. Katika habari ya uko huo manabii walitafuta tafuta na kuchunguza chunguza ambao walitabiri habari za neema itakayowafikia ninyi. Ngoja kwanza. Mm. What were the prophets doing? Manabii walikuwa wanafanya nini? Hebu tuseme na Kiswahili walikuwa wanafanya nini? Walitafuta tafuta tafuta na kuchunguza chunguza. chunguza. Wanachunguza nini? Habari, Habari za waliotabiri za neema itakayofikilia ninyi. Isaiah wanted to know. Isaiah alitaka kujua. He says there's something I'm not understanding. Anasema kuna kitu kuhusu kufahamu hapa and they sought na alitafuta that God may reveal it to them. Ili Mungu wa so I want you to know that the prophets you love so much they admired you. You make yourself very small when you say I'm calling the fire of Elijah. And Elijah wanted to be like you. You make yourself very small. Elijah is searching is inquiring what is this grace that will go to the church I want to know and you have this grace you are saying I am Elijah you make Jesus look like he didn't achieve it so that was verse 10 they were told there is something they were told go to verse 11 wakatafuta ni wakati upi Ni wakati wa namna gani ulionywa na roho wa Kristo aliyekuwa ndani yao ambayo alitangulia kuyashuhudia mateso yatakayempata Kristo na utukufu utakaokuepo baada ya hayo Now look at that open your eyes Fungua macho yako hapa The prophets knew two things Manabii walijua vitu viwili tu The suffering of Christ Kuteswa kwa Kristo and the glory na utukufu Not the church Sio kanisa Because the suffering of Christ up to the cross Maana walitua jua tu mpaka pale msalabani the actual glory of Christ displayed on earth ile utukufu wa Mungu ambaye Yesu alionyesha duniani hapa is in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ hiyo ni ya kurudi kwa Yesu Kristo hapa when he will rule atapotawala like a king on earth kama mfalme duniani now he is glorified in heaven sasa ametukuzwa mbinguni a time is coming wakati unafika when the whole earth will be full of his glory ambapo dunia nzima itajawa na utukufu wake the prophet saw manabii waliona he is suffering and his glory not the church 
you are a treasure wewe ni mtu wa dhamana let me tell you something very good acha niwaambie kitu ya ndani kidogo in genesis chapter 1 verse 1 mwanzo moja moja don't close that don't close that genesis it's chapter 1 verse 1 mwanzo moja moja in the beginning mwanzo what did god do mungu alifanya nini he created aliumba what did he create aliumba nini the heavens bingu the earth na dunia the story is over inamalizikia pale by the way lakini where does god live mungu anaishi wapi in heaven binguni because in the beginning is god who created kwanza mwanzo mungu aliumba and he created heaven akaumba bingu so where was he living before he created heaven hapo kabla hajaumba bingu so let's go Amen. so in the beginning god created heaven and the earth hapo mwanzo mungu aliumba bingu na nchi and that statement is complete na hapo inabaki imetimika do you know why unajua kwa nini when god created heaven and earth wakati mungu alipoumba bingu na nchi he suspended the program of heaven aliweka ile mpangilio wa mbinguni kando he started working on an earthly program akaanza kufanya kazi ya kidunia because the path of christ was on the way on earth maana ilikuwa ndio njia ya kristo kukuja duniani then after the crucifixion of christ jesus baada ya kusulubishwa kwa yesu his burial kuzikwa kwake and his resurrection na kufuka kwake now god suspended the earthly program mungu aliweka kando mpango wa dunia he started working on the heavenly program akaanza kufanya kazi ya bingu which is the church ambayo ndio kanisa sasa amen Umesikia hiyo? He created heaven and earth. Alumba bingu na inch. Heaven was created for the church. Bingu iliundwa kwa sababu ya kanisa. Because there was no church in the Old Testament. Maana kukuwa kanisa katika agano la kale. There's no program about heaven in the Old Testament. Hakuna mpangilio bingu kuhusu katika agano la kale. In the Old Testament you will inherit the earth. Yaani katika agano la kale kwa tu mambo ya dunia. Inherit the earth. Tutaridhi inchi. Israel was never promised anything about heaven. Amen. Israel haikuwa yaediwa kitu chochote. Every promise of Israel is on this earth. Hadi zote Israel ilikuwa ni hapa inchi. But immediately the church comes. Lakini kanisa ilipokuja. The heavenly glories are now being revealed. Bingu ikafungwa kwa ajili ya kanisa. Amen. Amen. Okay. How do I know heaven was created for man? Tajuaje kwamba bingu iliundwa kwa sababu ya kanisa? Because the first one among us men kwa sababu wa kwanza kwa wanadamu is sitting there amekaa huko Jesus Christ Yes Christo waiting for you to join him Anakungoja wewe ungane na yeye huko mbinguni So at least there's one man in heaven Kwa hivyo angalau kuna mtu mmoja mbinguni our mediator yule mpatanishi wetu The man Jesus Christ Ambaye ni Yesu Christo is in heaven yuko mbinguni assuring you anakuhakikishia That where I am mahali nilipo you also will be there Wewe pia utakuwa huko Rightly dividing the word of truth Yaani kubambanua neno la Mungu kueleza vizuri. So the program of God was both earthly and heavenly. Wale mpango ya Mungu ilikuwa ni binguni na duniani. Earthly inji up to the cross. Mpaka msalabani. Heavenly bingu after the cross. Baada ya msalaba. Physical and literal before the cross. Yaani kimwili ni kabla ya msalaba. Spiritual kiroho after the cross. Baada ya msalaba. That's why in the Old Testament ndio sababu agano la kale the spirit of God came upon a man Roho wa Mungu alimjia mtu empowered him kumpa nguvu to serve God kumtumikia Mungu and went away na akarudi akapotea in the new testament katika agano jipya the holy spirit roho mtakatifu indwells you anakanda ni mwako forever milele na milele there's no day the holy spirit goes away hakuna siku roho mtakatifu ataenda when you go away you go with him akienda tunaenda na yeye when you come back you come back with akirudi, him akirudi tunarudi na yeye so verse 12 maybe you can read it again from verse 10 as you come you Mm. I'll read NLT version. Mm. This salvation was something even the prophet wanted to know more about. Mm. When they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. Mm-hmm. 11. They wondered what time or situation the spirit of Christ within them was talking about. Mm-hmm. When he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. Mm-hmm. Verses 12. They were told so hold on there achi hapo kwanza kidogo walitafuta tafuta walitafuta tafuta wakafanya nini nyingine wakichunguza chunguza wakachunguza chunguza na wakajibiwa amen they were searching and inquiring walikuwa na tafuta tafuta na kuchunguza chunguza and god answered them na mungu akawajibu so they were searching and inquiring about the grace of god that will come upon you walikuwa na tafuta na kuchunguza neema ya mungu itakayokuchia wewe and god replied them na mungu akawajibu na read the reply mwitikio wa Mungu mstari wa 12 they were told they were told that their message were not for themselves but for you yes. and now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the holy spirit sent from heaven it is all so wonderful that even the angels 
are eagerly watching these things to happen. Even the angels. Hata malaika. You know in our, in Awasi where my brother comes from. Awasi ambapo ndugu yangu anatoka huko chini. We have many good religions there. Kuna dini nyingi nzuri huko. Roho fueny. But there's one that is there it's called Lejo Maria. Kuna moja iko pale inaitwa Lejo Maria. They worship angels. Wanaabudu ngu malaika. You hear them say Angel Michael. Unasikia wakisema malaika pinga. Angels Malaika they wish they could just see a little bit of the grace that is upon you. Wanatamani wangeona tu neema ndogo iliyo juu yako. Do you know none of the angels Unajua kuna malaika hata mmoja has ever housed God. Ambaye mai umweka Mungu. Did you know that? Unajua unajua hivyo? Even Gabriel hata Gabriel mwenyewe even angel Michael the angel of the war hata Mikael wa vita they have never carried the presence of god hawajawahi beba uwepo wa mungu that's why david asks ndio sababu david anauliza what is man that you are mindful of him ni mwanadamu aina gani wewe unamwangalianga tu in essence katika hali hiyo angels are your servants malaika ni watumishi wako the bible says they are ministering spirits nasema ni ile roho zinazofanya kazi kwa mimi since you inherit salvation na kwa sababu utaridhi uokofu angels must serve you malaika lazima wakutumikie Do you know why they serve you? Unajua kwa nini wanakutumikia? These days we have small state houses in every county. Sasa hizi kuna ile state house ndogo ndogo katika kila county. If you go to Nairobi where Uhuru is. Ukiwa Nairobi mahali Uhuru wako, the whole area. Area yote hiyo is surrounded by soldiers. Imezungukwa na wanajeshi. What are they doing? Wanafanya nini? Protecting the king. Wanalinda mfalme. Now this is what you need to know. Hivi ndio tujue sasa. That the king lives in you kwamba mfalme sana anaishi ndani mwako So you don't have to pray for angels to come and protect you. Sila asiye usiombe ombe malaika atamkuja mlichunge mnelinde. For how long is the king living in you? Mfalme ataishi ndani mwako forever. Milele na milele. So for how long will the angels protect you? Malaika atakulinda muda gani? Milele na milele. As long as you are still the state house of heaven. O, kama unakaa katika ikulu ya mbinguni and you will be forever the status of heaven na siku zote utakaa hapo you will be protected by angels utalindwa na malaika wote praise jesus bana sifiwe these are mysteries hizi ni siri kweli israel never knew anything about them israel kwa hiyo kitu kama hii so they were told waliambiwa prophets manabi you have nothing to do with the church Hamuna chochote kuhusu kanisa the message of the church has nothing to do with you na ujumbe wa kanisa sio wenu is preserved for the church. Imewekwa kando kwa ajili ya kanisa. Praise be to God. Bwana asifiwe. Let's go back to our scripture in second Timothy again. Hebu turudi katika andiko letu Timotheo wa pili. So I want you to notice nataka uangalie kitu the problem of not dividing the word of God rightly. Shida ya kutopambanua na kueleza neno la Mungu vinavyofaa. You mix things. Unachanganya vitu hapa food that was for adam and eve chakula ilikuwa adam na awa you feed to the church unalisha kanisa food that was for abraham chakula ilikuwa ibrahim you feed to the church unalisha kanisa food that was for israel kanisa ilikuwa ilikuwa israel you feed to the church unapeana kanisa another day you discover food for the church alafu ilikuwa kanisa you feed it for the church unalisha kanisa so the church is confused kanisa inachanganyikiwa hapo they have spiritual kwashako wanakuwa na ile ugonjwa wa kashoko wa kiroho eating things that didn't belong to them. Wanakula vitu yenye sio yao. So let's go back to Ephesians finish first. Ephesians chapter 3. Wa Efeso 3. So look at verse 5. Galatia 5. Paul says this mystery about Christ which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So you can see the mystery about Christ Jesus. Utaona siri kuhusu Yesu Kristo was never known to the sons of men haikuwa ijulikana kwa wanadamu but was revealed lakini ilidhihirishwa na kufunuliwa it was a revelation ilikuwa ni ufunuo to the apostles kwa mitume but if, as you have seen most of the apostles even learned this mystery through paul na vile tumeona hata mitume wengine walikosa ufunuo mpaka paulo akawa nao can i just show you a small insight then we live there wacha nionyeshe undani kidogo alafu tuendelee When John the Baptist came, wakati yona mbatisaji alipokuja, he had one message. Alikuwa na ujumbe moja tu. Repent, tuubuni, 
for the kingdom of God is Mefika. What was he speaking about? That Jesus Christ the Messiah was coming yes, to offer Israel the kingdom of heaven. In other words, heaven's rule on earth. If they received Christ Jesus immediately Israel will have become the headquarter of the earth. Jesus conquering the whole world through Israel. But they rejected him. Jesus himself came preaching. Repent. Tubuni. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They rejected him. Then Alafu. he died on the cross. Akafa msalabani. He empowered the apostles to preach the gospel. Akawapea nguvu wale mitume wale kuhubiri nchi. So what do they know? Wanajua nini? Repent. Tubu for the kingdom of heaven. Ufalme wa binguni. They know nothing else. Hakuna kitu kingine walikuwa wanajua. So Peter is at Jerusalem. Kwa hivyo Petero anakuwa Yerusalemu with multitudes there. Tu ana watu wengi sana. Praise filled with the Holy Spirit. Wala chazwa Roma mtakatifu. But he has no knowledge about the church yet. Lakini hana ujumbe hata elewe kuhusu kanisa. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Amejazwa Roma mtakatifu. But not with the knowledge about the church. Lakini hana ujuzi kuhusu kanisa. I know what Peter did. Yeye Peter alifanya nini? He began to accuse the Jews that they killed their Messiah. Anaanza kuwahukumu Wayahudi ati walimuua Masiya. And he accused them. Ana wahukumu. And they were touched. Na wakaguzwa. They ask okay what do you want us to do now? Wakasema sasa tufanye nini basi? In verse 37. Mzali wa 37. Peter does not know what they should do. Peter hata hajua. He says repent and be baptized. Anasema tubuni mumubatizwe. That's what Peter knows. Even though Peter hajua. It is Paul who comes and says. Paulo tu ndiye anatoa. Believe on Christ Jesus and you will be saved. Anasema amini Yesu Kristo na mtaokolewa. Peter did not know that truth at that time. The, the only gospel he knew is the gospel of the kingdom of heaven which says he repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he was challenged at the crusade. Peter was not preaching Jesus at the crusade. Peter He was accusing the Jews for killing their Messiah. Then they told him, "Okay, we are sorry. What do we do now?" Repent. Tubuni. Be baptized. Mubatizwe. The message of John the Baptist. So in Ephesians chapter 3, now verse 6, Paul says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel. Paulo anasema kwamba mataifa ni waridhi pamoja nasi wa urithi mmoja na wa mwili mmoja na washiriki pamoja nasi katika ahadi yake katika Kristo yetu kwa njia ya injili. The Jews, Wayahudi, they were a special nation to God. Ilikuwa ni taifa maalum ya Mungu and even to date mpaka mpaka leo is still a special nation to God. ni taifa maalum ya Mungu. God has just set them apart. Mungu amewaweka tu kando to craft you in. Ili wakaweze kukuingiza ndani. They are still a special nation to God. Ni taifa taula la Mungu. Everything God was doing on earth. Chochote ambacho Mungu alikuwa anafanya duniani. Before the cross, kabla msalaba was through the nation of Israel. Ilikuwa inapitia taifa la Israeli. When they rejected him, walipomkata, now he had to build a new uh, institution ilibidi ajenge taifa lingine that he can use ambayo anaweza litumia call the church linaitwa kanisa so everything god is doing on earth right now kwa hivyo saa hizi kile mungu anafanya duniani is through the church ni kupitia kanisa tu now god has not rejected israel mungu si ati amewakatalia mbali wa israel but since they have not served him properly lakini kwa sababu hawakumpokea vizuri he is building the church anajenga kanisa lake to serve him kukutumikia praise god amen Now what is he doing? Anafanya nini? He's saying it's only through the gospel. Anasema tu ni kupitia injili peke yake that the church can come into Yo, the promises of Israel. Ndio kanisa linaweza kuja katika ahadi ya Israeli. There are things he had made purpose for the nation of Israel. Kuna vitu alikuwa amepangia Israeli peke yake. But they have rejected him. Lakini kwa sababu alimkata. Now he's saying I want to release them to the church. Ni anasema kwamba sasa nataka kuachilia kanisa. So how can the church enjoy them? Kanisa itafurahiaje? Through the gospel. Kupitia injili. Through the gospel. Kupitia injili tu. Have you seen it in verse 6? Umeona mstari wa 6? That the sita. Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promises in Christ through what? The gospel. So verse 7 says of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace 
of God given to me by the effective working of his power. In verse 8 says, To me, who am less than the least of the, all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Mm -hmm. Unsearchable riches of Christ. In other words, you cannot have a research about Jesus Christ. No science can find the truth about Christ Jesus. Utafiti haitafanywa kuhusu Yesu Kristo tena. No prophecy could find the truth about Christ Jesus. Hakuna unabii utapata kuhusu uchungu wa Yesu Kristo. It was a mystery hidden in God. Ni siri iliyofichwa na Mungu. And there's no man who could search for it and get it. Na hakuna mtu mwenye atachunguza kutafuta na Until God himself reveals it. Mpaka Mungu mwenyewe afunue. And Paul says I'm preaching that unsearchable riches of Christ. Na Paulo anasema na ubiri utajiri ile siri sio ya Mungu ambayo ijulikani kwa watu. I'm coming back to that. So let's read verse 9 and 10. The Bible is 9 and 10. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. So the message about the church Uchumbe kuhusu kanisa for all ages kwa Afrika zote was hidden ilikuwa imefichwa where wapi in god katika kristo yesu have you seen that Melo. now look at verse 10 angalia mstari wa 10 then we go back to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of god might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places unaona nasema ili sasa kwa njia ya kanisa hekima ya Mungu iliyo ya namna nyingi ijulikane na falme na mamlaka katika ulimwengu wa roho so why are you on earth kwa nini wewe uko duniani the intention of god mpango wa Mungu is that through us kupitia kwetu his wisdom hii hekima may be revealed ifunuliwe to who kwa nani to who kwa nani to all the principalities and powers kwa in the heavenly places. Kwa ile mamlaka na, na, na nguvu ulimwengu katika ulimwengu wa roho. Every time the Bible says principalities and powers. Wakati wote Biblia inasema kwamba mamlaka na falme is talking about the orderly arrangement of Satan's kingdom. Inaongea kuhusu mipango iliyopangiliwa ufalme wa shetani. Plus his all his generals. Na ile mipango zake na ile majeshi yake. All his demons. Na mapepo yake. They need to see you. Lazima zikuone and marvel. When Satan looks at you, he needs to be shocked. And as far as Tuke, because you are displaying the wisdom of God. In your speaking, in your doing, in your lifestyle, in your preaching, you are displaying the wisdom of God. And the devil looks at you and he trembles. Fortunately, lakini bahati mbaya hapa preachers look at the devil and tremble. Wahubiri wanaangalia shetani wanakula kona. I hope you are hearing me. Si unanisikia wewe? God has an intention. Mungu ana waso mawazo. Put your eyes again to that verse 10. Hebu weka macho yako mstari wa 10. What are the first three words? Maneno ya kwanza ni gani? To the intent. Eh? Who, whose intent? Ile ni God's intent. Ni mpango wa nani? God had a purpose. Mungu alikuwa na njia na intention. Alikuwa na njia. Why is building the church? Kwa nini anajenga kanisa? God did not build the church to be terrified by Satan. Mungu hakujenga kanisa ili tingizwe na kutetemeshwa na shetani. So that every Sunday, kwamba kila Jumapili, we are binding him. Tunakemea shetani. Then we don't bind him properly, he comes back next Sunday. Atukufungi vizuri Jumapili ile inayokuja tena tunamfunga tena. But we are binding him in this church, in this church. Tunafunga kwa hii kanisa and in the other church is terrorizing people. Hiyo kanisa sasa inaenda kuitetemesha. That's not the purpose of God. Hiyo si makusudi ya Mungu. The purpose of God is that Satan will never step near the church. Kusudi la Mungu ni kwamba shetani asiwahi atakanyaka fence ya kanisa. Haven't you read in the Bible? Umesoma kwa Biblia that the one who is in the church is greater ni mkuu than the one who is in the church. Kuliko yule aliye pale duniani. Eh. Wewe kwa kanisa? Than the one who is in the world. In duniani. So who is in the church? Nani hapo kanisani? Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. And who is in the world? Nani hapo duniani? Satan himself. Shetani mwenyewe. What is he doing on your churches every Sunday? Anafanya nini kanisani kila Jumapili? Because you are not displaying the wisdom of God in your church. Kwa sababu hauonyeshi hekima ya Mungu kanisani. 
if you study the word of God, reveal these mysteries to your church. The devil will say that territory. I cannot go there anymore because they have already overcome me. He will look for other ignorant fellowships. God has an intent. Doesn't the Bible say so? God has an intention why he put you on earth here. And he wants the church to display his glory. Display his wisdom. To the powers, the principalities in the heavenly places. A church is not a place where the devil will go and play games with the pastor. That we start having fellowship with him. How many are you? Which fellowship is this you have with Satan? I will call fire. I will call fire from heaven. Can we leave these jokes? Praise God. You're just give me two days I'll be gone. You're just give me two days I'll be gone. God has an intention. Mungu wako na mpango. But there's something I want us to go back to in verse 6. Lakini kuna kitu nataka turudie mstari wa 6. So we can build it now slowly. Ili tujenge sasa polepole vizuri. In verse 6. Mstari wa 6 wa Efeso 3:6. Where the Bible says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Ya kwamba mataifa ni waridhi pamoja nasi wa urithi mmoja na wa mwili mmoja na washirika pamoja nasi wa hadi yake iliyo katika Kristo Yesu kwa njia ya injili kwa njia ya injili so we want to find out what is this gospel first hebu tuanze tuangalie injili hii ni nini kwanza because most people call themselves ministers of the gospel maana watu wengi wanajiita tu wa huduma wa injili when they are not ministers of the gospel at all lakini hata ukiona hawahubiri injili si wa huduma what is the gospel Injili ni nini? The word gospel in its simplicity. Neno injili kwa uraisi wake just means good news. Inamaanisha tu habari njema. Can we begin there? Tuanzie hapo. Good news. Habari njema. So when people come to church, watu wakikuja kanisani, what do they need to hear? Wanataka kusikia nini? Good news. Habari njema. So when I, I stand before you, nikisimama mbele yenu, and I say you are here. Nisema huko hapa and you are cast. Umelaaniwa. You are here. Uko hapa and you are about to die. Karibu ufe. Is that good news? Hiyo ni habari njema kweli? Is that what God called you to do? Hiyo ni Mungu alikutuitia tufanye. Or is that what you call yourself to do? Ama ni yule ulijiita kufanya. Every day you stand before people. Mara yoyote unasimama mbele ya watu. They need to hear good news. Wasikie habari njema. Praise God. Bwana asifiwe. Now good news. Habari njema is about ni kuhusu the saving grace of God ile eneema ya Mungu inayokoa through the finished work of Christ at the cross kupitia kazi iliyomalizika msalabani as good news ni habari njema apart from the cross mbali na msalaba every other news is bad news hiyo habari zingine zote ni mbaya even what Moses said hata ile Musa alisema is bad news ni habari mbaya there's no good news apart from the cross of calvary hakuna habari njema mbali na msalaba wa calvary okay let's go to Romans chapter 1 verse 1 Eto ndo warumi mmoja. Bible will love you today because we are opening places you have never opened before. Bible utaipenda leo. Tunaifungua kweli kweli. Write the scriptures down. Andika hii maandiko chini. When I'm gone you will be able to go through them slowly by slowly. Nikimaliza nikienda utaenda upitia pole pole ujifunze. So look at verse 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Warumi mmoja mmoja. Paul a bond servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated to the gospel of God. Paulo mtume wa Kristo Yesu aliyeitwa kuwa mtume na kutengwa aihubiri injili ya Mungu. Now to to say the truth. Kusema ukweli. Apart from the name of Jesus Christ in the Bible. Bali neno la Yesu Kristo katika Biblia. Who is God? Yesu ambaye ni Mungu. There's no other greater name I've seen in the Bible apart from the name of Paul. Hakuna jina lingine kuu nimeona kwa Biblia mbali na Yesu. Apart from the name of Paul. Mbali na jina Paulo. Jesus is highly exalted. Yesu wako mbinguni. But among men lakini kwa wanadamu I have never seen another greater name than the name of Paul. Sijaona jina lingine kuu kuliko Paulo. But Paul says, Paulo anasema, number one, kwanza, I am a bond servant of Christ. Mimi ni mtume wa Yesu Kristo. Paul says, I am a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Paulo anasema mimi ni mtumwa aliyewekwa kando kwa sababu ya Yesu. A bond servant means a willing slave. Yaani huyu ni mtumwa ambaye amekubali mwenyewe awe mtumwa. Says I Paul. Asema mimi Paulo. The great apostle. Mimi ni mtume mkuu. The man who has the revelation of mysteries. Mtu ambaye ako na siri za ufunuo. I am a slave of Christ Jesus. Mimi ni mtumwa wa Yesu Kristo. 
Brother, you are listening to me. Wapendwa, sijui kama mnasikia. Paul with his greatness in the ministry. Paulo pamoja na ile ukuu wake katika huduma. He understands one thing. Anaelewa kitu moja. I have a master over me. Mimi niko na mkuu juu yangu. You know most one. people preach as though they are masters of themselves. Watu wengi wanahubiri ni kama wao ndio wakubwa peke yao. That's why we don't care what proceeds out of our mouth. Ndio sababu hatujali nini kinatoka kinywani mwetu. We can lie from here when we know we are lying. Tunaweza danganyika madhabahu na tunajua tunadanganya. I can choose because I'm broke right now. Kwa naweza amua kwa sababu zina pesa sasa and say the spirit of God has come upon me. Nasema roho Mungu amenichia. Five men here need to be blessed now. Watu watano wahitaji kubarikiwa hapa. If you give 10,000 shillings each. Nahitaji 10,000 kila mmoja hapa. But you know you are looking for house rent. Na wewe unajua unatafuta kulipa nyumba. You know you are looking for school fees. Unatafuta school fees ya watoto. Instead of telling the church brethren. Bana kuambia tu wapendwa kweli. Your pastor has no school fees for the children. Watoto wangu wamefukuzwa shule. You look for how you can use God. Unajaribu nyamu ya kutumia Mungu. To achieve your purposes. Ili utimize makusudi. You are using God. Unatumia Mungu. I can see heaven open. Naona bingu iko wazi. And five men watu watano are being blessed here. Wanaenda kubarikiwa hapa. I can see your business. Naona biashara zenu. You are billionaire. Unakuwa billionaire. Somebody is buying land. Kuna mtu ananunua shamba. But lakini you must give me 10,000 first. Lakini unaleta 10,000 kila mtu. It's no spirit of God speaking is your poverty. Hakuna roho ya Mungu hapa ni wizi na umaskini. Paul says I am a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Paulo anasema mimi ni mtume niliyekujikuta. I am a slave. Mimi ni mtume. When you see me speak, ukiona nikiongea, I can only speak that what he has sent me to say. Nitaongea kile chenye ameniambia. I submit to his authority. Mimi nina chini ya mamlaka yake. When you see me act, ukiona ninachotenda, it's only what he has sent me to do. Nikile ameambia nifanye. I will not do something that he has not told me to do. Sifanyi kitu chenye ataniambia nifanye. I am a servant he is my master. Mimi ni mtume yeye ni mkuu wangu. Every time we stand before people. Kila wakati tunasimama mbele ya watu. I want you to take a position of a hotel waiter. Nataka uchukue nafasi ya ule peana chakula kwa hoteli. You know we have bad manners as Africans. Unajua zingine wa Afrika tuna tabia mbaya. When you eat good food in a hotel. Ukikula chakula mzuri kwa hoteli. You tell the waiter thank you so much the food was nice. Unaambia waiter asante sana chakula ilikuwa mzuri. You, you give a tip to the waiter. Unampa ka kitu hapo kidogo. The waiter has no idea how the food was cooked. Waiter hata hana habari chakula lipikwaje yeye ni kupeana tu. He has no idea. Ana habari. In fact he may be hearing from you that the food is good. Kwanza hata anasikia kwa kumbe kumbe chakula ni tamu. Because in some hotels, kama hoteli zingine, the workers are given ugali and sukuma wiki behind them. Wafanyikazi wanapewa wanga ugali na sukuma wiki kwa kando yenye mafuta. Then <laughs> Then they serve the good food where they are guests. So you are telling the way that this food was so sweet. Thank you so much. Unaambiwa hii chakula ni tamu asante sana. If you want to thank someone for the good food, ukitaka kushukuru mtu kwa chakula mzuri, go to the kitchen. Enda jikoni. There's a chef in that kitchen. Kuna mpishi kwale kwa jikoni. Who knows the salt he put there? Anajua chumbi aliyoka namna gani? Let me ask you. Wacha nikuulize. If you own a hotel, kama wewe ni mwenye hoteli and a waiter comes from the kitchen alafu muhudumu anatoka jikoni taking the food to the customer anachukua chakula anapelekea mteja then you find the waiter in the corridor alafu unapata kwa corridor hapo he's adding more salt anaongeza tu chumvi hapo na pilipili <laughs> saying i want this person to know that the salt in this child is a hotel nataka mtu ajue what will you do as the owner of the hotel kama mwenye hoteli utafanya nini You will sack him. Utamfuta. Are you sure? Una uhakika. That's what we do every Sunday. Na hiyo ndio unafanyanga Jumapili. God has given a message. Mungu amekupa ujumbe. But you don't trust this message is good. Hawaamini ujumbe ni mzuri. You go in your corner. Unaenda kwa kakona. You add in your things. Unaongeza pilipili na chumvi. Before you come to serve. Unaletea watu. You need to know. Unahitaji kujua. It is not your message. Si ujumbe yako. Even if people don't like it. Hata kama watu wapeni. It's not you they are rejecting. Sio wewe wanakataa. They are rejecting God. Wanakataa Mungu. And if they reject God. Wakikataa Mungu, you continue preaching the message. Endelea kuhubiri ujumbe. You are a bond servant. Wewe ni mtume umejitolea. Praise be to Jesus. Bwana sifiwe. Don't ever preach a message to please men. Usiwahi kuhubiri ujumbe kufurahisha watu. Preach what God is sending you to preach. Ubiri kila Mungu anasema ubiri. If while you are preaching the gospel, wakati unahubiri injili hiyo, men are pleased. Watu wanafurahia. Glory be to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. If they are not pleased, kama sipopendezwa, it's up to the Father. Shauri yao ni baba yake. I'm just mungu. a messenger. Na wewe ni mtume tu. In fact in most African cultures, kwanza kale tamaduni za Kiafrika, you don't harm a messenger. Auwi yule mtume aliyetumwa. Even in the Bible culture, hata katika tamaduni za Biblia, 
there were cities surrounded by walls and there was a watchman at the gate na kulikuwa na mlinzi katika jangla when the people are coming from very far watu wakitoka mbali he'll take a message to the city atachukua anapeleka ujumbe katika mji and say there are people that i don't know they are coming from very far are you expecting visitors naona watu wanatoka mbali sijui ni wageni then a messenger will be sent alafu mjumbe atatumwa go and ask them enda waulize do they want war or peace wanataka vita ama amani that messenger was never killed yule mjumbe hawezi uwawa he'll come back and say prepare for war they are coming arudi mchiandae kwa vita wako tayari messengers are never killed wajumbe hao wawi You are a messenger of Christ. Wewe ni mjumbe wa Kristo? Hold on. Ngoja kwanza. What is the meaning of the word apostle? Neno mtume inamaanisha nini? They send out one. Aliyetumwa. What are you sent to do? Umetumwa kufanya nini? To take a message. Kupeleka ujumbe. So every time you stand before God's people. Kwa hivyo mara nyingi ukisimama mbele ya watu wa Mungu, be reminded. Kumbushwa hii. And I pray you hear this voice every day you are speaking. Na mimi naomba usikienge sauti kila siku ukisimama kwa madhabahu. You are a messenger of Christ. Wewe ni mjumbe wa Kristo. If there's no word from Christ, na usiposikia neno kutoka kwa Kristo, don't speak. Usihubiri. You rather be honored in heaven. Afadhali kuheshimiwa mbinguni and be dishonored among men. Na wa kukatai wa kuona na. To be honored among men and be dishonored in heaven. Ama watu wa kuheshimu dunia na mbinguni wa kukatai. Paul says, Paulo anasema, I am a bond servant. Mimi ni mtumwa niliyejitolea. Bond servant. Yule mtumwa aliyejitolea. In the olden times. Wakati ule wa zamani, if I take you as my slave nikikuchukua kama mtumwa wangu because you owe me money kwa sababu ni pesa unatakana unilipe it means you are a poor man na maanisha wewe maskini and i'm a rich man mimi ni mtu tajiri i've lent you money nimekukopesha pesa you don't have the capacity to pay sasa huna uwezo wa kulipa so we agree sasa tumekubaliana you will be my slave for 10 years utakuja kunifanyia kazi kama mtumwa miaka 10 you work under my instructions utafanya chini ya mashati wa miaka 10 after 10 years baada ya miaka 10 you discover utatambua life in this place maisha hapa is better than life outside there ni bora kuliko huko nje you are told now you can go naambia sasa enda sasa miaka imeja no i'm not going anywhere nasema hapana you are told you have freedom go nasema uhuru enda sasa you say i'm not going anywhere nasema siendi popote i want to serve you willingly nataka kutumikia nimejitolea then the master will take you at the door post bwana atakupeleka pale katika lango tear your ear like masai akate sikio lako kama masai with a big metal na chuma kubwa and put a ring there na weke ring pale so that when you are among other slaves ukikuwa kwa watumwa wengine they also know pia wanajua you are a different kind of slave wewe ni mtumwa aina tofauti you are a willing slave wewe ni umejitolea mwanga mwenyewe so paul says paulo anasema jesus has not forced me to preach the gospel yesu hajanilazimisha nihubiri i have chosen to preach the gospel nimeamua wenyewe nihubiri nchi because i love him kwa sababu nampenda yesu praise be to jesus bwana sifiwe some of us preach as though we have been forced by god na wengine tunakaa ni kama tumelazimishwa na mungu and we threaten people tunatisha tisha watu you don't know how difficult this work is unajua hii kazi ni ngumu sana kuhubiri eh if it's difficult stop it kama ni ngumu siwache my bible tells me wewe bila unaniambia it is god ni mungu who works through me aliyefanya kazi ndani mwangu both to will kwanza kwa kuamua na kwa kutenda according to his good pleasure kulingana na furaha yake mwenyewe It's not difficult. I'm just a vessel God is using. Mimi ni chombo Mungu ananitumia. Look at it this way. Angalia hivi. You are drinking water through a cup. Unakunywa maji na kikombe. The cup is complaining. Na kikombe nalalamika. It's very hard to serve you this water. Ngumu sana kukunywesha na hii maji wewe. A born servant of Jesus Christ. Yule mtumwa aliyejitolea. So we need to be willing. Kwa hivyo tuamue tujitolee. Willing to serve God. Tujitolee kumtumikia Mungu. Amen. Amen. If you go to First Peter chapter 5 we'll not go there right now but one to us 5 he talks so much about that so Paul upon servant of Christ Jesus Paul ni yule mtumwa aliyejitolea Yesu Kristo then number 2 he knows what he has been called to do ya pili anajua ameitwa kufanya nini he says i have been called as an apostle amesema nimeitwa kama mtume called as an apostle nimeitwa kama mtume you know there is something wrong in the church these days unajua siku hizi kuna shida na kanisa we have been told tumeambiwa that you begin as a deacon Unaanza kwanza kama shemanzi then grow into an evangelist alafu unakuja kuwa mwinjilisti wa kanisa kama pastor unakuwa mchungaji mdogo then a reverend unakuwa reverend then a bishop alafu unakuwa bishop and if you are a reverend ukiwa reverend either you are the right reverend or the wrong one or reverend wa kwanza ukulia ama ule mbaya mzuri i've heard some are right reverends mbona wengine ati ni reverend right ama wrong reverends wengine ni wale wa makosa or is it right and left sijui na kwanga kushota makulia ni gani 
Hey, most are most, others are most. Wengine ni most wale wajuu sana. Nonsense. Hiyo ni ushenzi. Eh? Others are ak. Wengine ni askofu mkuu. Paul says you need to know your calling. Paul anasema ujue mwito wake ni upi. This mine yangu is an apostolic calling. Ni ya umitume. So what is your calling? You need to know your calling. Mwito wako ni gani? Gani ni yako? You don't grow from being an evangelist to a pastor to a bishop. Wewe sio kwa uinjilisti kuwa mchungaji au kuwa askofu. It is great to be an evangelist. Ni vizuri kuwa mwinjilisti ni poa sana. Praise be to God. Bwana asifiwe. It is great to be an evangelist. Ni poa sana kuwa mwinjilisti. And to serve in the office God has called you in as an evangelist. Na kutumia hiyo ofisi Mungu alikupa kama mwinjilisti. These are spiritual giftings. Even the power of kiroho. They are not administrative gifts. Sio vipao vya kusimamia. So to Paul, kwa Paulo, he says I am called to be an apostle. Anasema nimeitwa kuwa mitume. I don't know in our churches if there are people who know I am a pastor. Sijui kanisani kama watu wanajua mimi ni mchungaji. Because sometimes we try to think that we are stars. Wajua wakati mwingine tunafikiria kwa na movie sisi ni manyota sisi ni watu wa bora sana you know when you are seeing rambo But, during my days i used to watch rambo unaona kama siku zetu tulikuwa tunaona bruce lee ilikuwa za nguo and he can do everything in that movie wangefanya kila kitu katika hiyo hiyo sinema you need to know your specific calling ujue mwito wako ni nini gani so that you don't keep stepping on the feet of others usiwe ni mtu wa kukanyakanyaga miguu ya watu there are people god has called to be wonderful leaders of praise and worship in churches kuna watu mungu ameitwa wao viongozi wazuri wa sifa kanisani when they see us see and dance when they are singing wakiona katika na kuimba wanapoimba they say i'll begin my church wasema nitaanza kanisa langu basi they have been promoted now from a singer to a pastor sasa wameinuliwa kutoka kuimba kanisani na kuwa pastor mchungaji you need to know your calling ujue mwito wako mpendwa ujue praise jesus bwana asifiwe and be so sure na uwe na uhakika that i've been called to serve here umeitwa kutumikia mungu hapa in kenya we have something called disciplined forces hapa Kenya kuna ile ile kikosi cha nidhamu. You have police there. Kuna maaskari pale. We have the AP. Kuna ma AP. The army. Kuna jeshi. And if you go to the army there is there are different sections of the army. Na ukienda kwa kikosi cha jeshi kuna vikundi tofauti tofauti. Supposing you are uh, an AP police. Pengine wewe ni askari wa AP. Then you feel like no I want to do the work of a CID. Na ukasema nataka kufanya kazi ya kuchunguza CID. Then you look for the CID office in your county you go and sit there. Unatafuta ile ofisi ya CID kwa kaunti hiyo na begin to investigate things. Unaanza kuchunguza vitu. <laughs> They look for you in your office you are not there. Wanakutafuta ofisi yako hauko. They say you are absent without official leave. Wanasema wewe umekosa kuja kazi na hujaomba ruhusa. It is called a wall. Absent without official leave. Yaani umeenda tu bila kusema umeenda wapi. By the time you are going to look for your salary, kwanza ukienda kutafuta mshahara siku yako, you will discover that you were sacked long time ago. Unatambua kumbe ulifutwa kazi zamani na ujui. And there are many people in church. Na kuna watu wengi kanisani. Who will stand before the presence of God? Wamesema mbele ya Mungu. For a crown. Kutafuta taji. They'll find none watafika huko hakuna because you didn't serve in your office maana kwa ofisi yako na kutumika if god has called you as an evangelist in a church like this mungu kama mkuita mwinjilisti wa kanisa kama hii you are not bringing people to the pastor hauleti mchungaji watu you are bringing people to christ unaleta watu kwa kristo go and do your work enda ufanye kazi yako even if pastor never mentions your name hata kama pastor atakutaja he doesn't have to si lazima god is mentioning your name every day mungu anataja jina lako kila siku You know I've brought so many people in that church and they don't even respect me there. Kanisa nimeleta watu wengi hata wanisalami yangi wanioongeleshe vizuri. That's what he says. Anasema called to be an apostle. Amesema nimeitwa kuwa mitume. I have been set apart for the gospel. Praise Jesus. Anasifiwe. I can see you writing notes. Naona kumbe mnaandika. Find out if you know what you have been called to be and write in your book. Enda utafute kile umeitwa kufanya andika kwa kitabu yako. Say I'm called to be a pastor. Sema nimeitwa kuwa mtungaji. When they call us bishop wanapoita askofu inaoita askofu huyo that's not a calling it's an administrative office hiyo sio mwito hiyo ni ofisi ya kusimamia they say anyone who desires to become a bishop anayetamani kuwa askofu so when we desire we become kwa hivyo tukitamani tunakuwa sio mwito but you know your calling lakini unajua mwito wako si ndio praise god bwana asifiwe so he says i have been separated to the gospel of god amesema nimetengwa kando kwa sababu ya injili ya mungu I am a born servant of Christ. Mimi ni mtume niliyejitolea. I'm called as an apostle. Nimeitwa kama mitume. I am set apart for the gospel. Nimetengwa kwa sababu ya injili. For the gospel. Nimekwa kando kwa sababu ya injili. Paul says, Paul anasema, When you see me, ukiniona mimi, there's only one thing I can do. Kuna kitu moja naweza fanya. Preach the gospel. Hubiri injili tu. 
Now if Paul could say that. Kama Paulo angesema hivyo. Why have we given ourselves many other assignments? Kwa nini tumejipea kazi nyingi? Those zingine hizo. So I wanted to follow this now. Nataka kufuata. So Paul says I've been set apart for the gospel of God. Paul anasema nimewekwa kando kwa injili ya Yesu Kristo. We'll come back to that word gospel of God. Is the one I'm pursuing. Tutarudi kwa hiyo kazi ya injili kwa sababu hiyo ndio. In verse 3 says which he promised. Now what is he talking about? Anasema kwamba niliyoaidiwa. Ni nini? What was that he's talking about? Neno kitu gani anazungumzia? The gospel injili which he promised ambaye aliahidi for through his prophets in the holy scriptures. Kabla kuahidi kwa kinywa cha manabii wake. So this gospel we are preaching it does not come from us it comes from God and God promised his touch they will hear the gospel through the Old Testament prophets it's a promise to the church so if you are not preaching the gospel you are not doing what God wanted the church to hear God promised the church through the prophets I will send men who will preach the good news the gospel does not begin with us it's not what we create in our hearts is not our intellect sio ile kitu tumesomea we don't figure out the gospel hatutuangalie injili takuaje is not something we try to make sio kitu tunajaribu kuunda it's called the gospel of god inaitwa injili ya mungu the good news of god habari njema ya mungu so it's not for you to start thinking now uh, these people are not giving sasa wewe uko fikiria tu unajua ah watu kumbe hawatoi kitu. Ah. Uh-uh. Okay, let me stop that. Waachana na hiyo kitu kwanza. You must go back to the Bible. Rudi tu kwa Biblia. The message of God to the people through you. Ni ujumbe wa Mungu wa wako Mungu amekupa upewa. Not for you to start coming up with schemes. Sio kutoka kwa kichwa chako. Number 1 it was promised. Kwanza iliahidiwa through the prophets. Kupitia manabii. Number 2 if you look at verse 3, ya pili mstari wa tatu. Concerning what? Roma moja tatu. Nasema nini? Kuhusu nani mwanawe? Do you have Bibles? Uko na Biblia hapa? Let's read verse 3 all of us. Roma mstari wa tatu. 1 2 3 let's read. Yaani habari za mwanawe aliyezaliwa katika ukoo wa Daudi kwa jinsi ya mwili. <laughs> So if you are a preacher of the gospel, kama ni muhubiri wa injili, what does the gospel concern? Injili ni uhusu na So if you are not preaching Jesus, kama uhubiri Yesu, you are not preaching the gospel. Hauhubiri injili yoyote. Let me come closer. Baje nikuje karibu kidogo. If I come today, nikikuja leo, and tell you, niwaambie, today we'll be learning at seven keys to keep your marriage good. Leo tajifunza ile siri saba za kuweka ndoa yako iwe mzuri. That is not the gospel. Yes, hiyo injili. Because Jesus is the only key that sustains a marriage. Maana Yesu ni ufunguo pekee ya kuchunga ndoa. If I came today and told you, leo nikuja nikwambie 21 keys on how to break curses. Vifunguo 21 za kuvunja laana. That is not the gospel. Hiyo si injili. Because Jesus is the only key that breaks curses. Maana Yesu pekee ndio upomoe laana. If I came today to you, nikuja kwako leo and tell you four keys on how you can become prosperous. Vifunguo 4 za kufanikiwa mbele. That is not the gospel. Hiyo sio injili. The gospel is concerning only one name. Injili ni jina moja. You know that name. Unajua hiyo. Why are you so young? Hema kwa sauti ni nani? You either preach about Jesus or quit from preaching. Okay. These are not my words. Go to second John. Let's, let's go there. This is a matter of life and death. So let's begin with verse 7. It says for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Kwa maana wadanganyifu wengi wametokea duniani wasiokiri ya kuwa Yesu Kristo yuaja katika mwili. Huyo ndiye yule mdanganyifu na mpinga Kristo. We will see the meaning of confessing that Christ came in the flesh. Tutaangalia maana ya kukiri kwamba Yesu alikuja katika mwili. Because when you confess that Christ came in the flesh, ukikiri kwamba Kristo alikuja kwa mwili, we talk about the deity of Christ. Tutaongea ile ukuu wa Kristo, we talk about his finished work on the cross. Ile kazi aliyomaliza msalabani, we talk about his victory over Satan. Tuona ile ushindi wake kumshinda shetani. We'll talk about it time enough. Tutaongelea tu wakati ikikubali. But the Bible says many people, yes, watu wengi, don't confess that. Hawakiri hivyo. 
the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. People have left the doctrine of Christ. They are now teaching so many other things. And the church is itching to hear those things. When a man of God stands here, he begins to prophesy. I can see a millionaire. That is not Jesus. Mm. Why do you want millionaires to go to hell? Because if you don't preach Jesus, you will have a church full of millionaires going to hell. We need only one gospel about Jesus Christ. So look at verse 8. Look to yourself that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Keep on opening your eyes. Look at verse 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Kila pitai cheo wala sidumu katika mafundisho ya Kristo yeye hana Mungu yeye adumui katika mafundisho hayo huyo ana baba na mwana pia Now look at the big announcement here now Hebu angalie tangazo kubwa hapa Verse 10 msari wa 10 Are you ready? Uko tayari? If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine do not receive him into your houses nor greet him Mtu akija kwenu naye haleti mafundisho haya msimkaribishe nyumbani mwenu wala msimpe salamu Bishop if people come to stand here and they are telling people you are cast you have authority to wake up pick the microphone and escort the man out you can escort him out and give him bus fare if someone comes to you and is not teaching about Jesus. The Bible says don't receive him. People have many things they are teaching. I have seen books written by men of God. 21 ways to disconnect yourself from ancestral curses. That's nonsense. Such like a man with his books he should not be allowed in the church of Christ don't beat him up escort him out with love and show him some love give him a, give him a thousand bob tell him go and buy your children food the only person allowed to speak to the church of Christ is the one who has the doctrine of Jesus. Look at the following verse down there. Verse 11. Read it yourself. One, two, three, let's read it. Don't hide behind, oh, don't point a finger at a servant of God. If he's not preaching Jesus, he is not a servant of God. So point a finger. It's a matter of life and death. Jesus Christ is the difference between hell and heaven. Praise God. So you know now people must preach Christ. Eh? So let's go back to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 3. That this gospel is only concerning Jesus Christ. Amen. So Paul says, in other words, I'm an apostle of Christ to preach Christ alone. Amen. Amen. You only have one message. Jesus Christ. Not Moses. Not Elijah. Not Isaiah. So don't waste time on Sunday calling the fire of Elijah. You call the name of Jesus. So I want you to quickly go to verse 14. Are you ready? Paul says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both the wise and to the unwise. 
Paulo anasema na wiwa na wayunani na wasio wayunani na wiwa na wenye hekima na wasio na hekima. So Paul says I have a calling. Paulo anasema niko na mwito. I am a servant. Mimi ni mtumishi. I have been set apart to preach the gospel. Nimewekwa kwando kuhubiri njiri and I'm a debtor. Sasa mimi na wiwa niko na deni. Brethren if you wake up every morning ukiamka asubuhi mpendwa kila asubuhi knowing that i owe someone the gospel kwamba kumbe niko na deni ya mtu ya injili when bishop invited me here askofu aliponikaribisha hapa i knew i owe someone in kitale the gospel alijua kama kuna mmoja ambaye ni na deni in my spirit nikafurahia ndani ya moyo wangu god thank you for giving me a privilege to pay my debts nikasema mungu asende kunipa fursa ya kulipa deni yangu you know pastor sometimes we tease the people we preach to Unajua zingine wachungaji tunawafanya wanaogopa if I was not the one kama si mimi actually every sunday kwanza kila jumapili you should thank people that they have come so that we may pay the debt ushukuru mungu amekuja ili ulipe deni because you are a debtor wewe uko na deni to all people kwa, kwa watu but i want you to think about it like this nataka ufikirie hivi as a servant of god as a, as a believer kama mtumishi wa mungu na if we woke up every morning ukiamka asubuhi knowing that i am a debtor of the gospel kujua kwamba niko na deni ya injili everybody you meet kila mtu anakutana eh you are not talking about football au ngoe juu ya mpira i hear young men in nairobi nasikia vijana pale nairobi shouting at each other wanapigiana makelele we beat you yesterday tuliwapiga jana so i think maybe it's goroma yande fc with the goroma play kwa ni goroma yande fc leopards they tell me no nasema hapana man you man you they have never even seen any player in man you hata wajaiona mchezaji mmoja wa man you i will beat you wanasema tutakupiga kesho this is a lost generation hii ni kizazi kimepotea If you meet somebody ukikutana na mtu after greetings baada ya salamu the gospel in chief if what because you are a data maana uko na deni my pastor used to tell me this mchungaji wangu alikuwa anapenda kuniambia if you meet two doctors ukikutana na madaktari wawili they are talking about the latest medicine and procedures in the world now wanaongea madawa yanayokuja ambayo yamepangiliwa hapa duniani if you meet two witches ukikutana na wachawi wawili Now you meet believers unakutana waumini and they are just in other stories wanapiga tu mastori zingine do you know the two men who were on their way to Emmaus unajua watu wawili ambao walikuwa wanaenda Emmaus they were defeated walikuwa wameshindwa but what, what were they talking about walikuwa wanaongea juu ya nini Jesus Christ yes Christo even if things are bad hata kama mambo ni mbaya talk about him ongea tu kuhusu Yesu Don't talk about Uhuru and Raila. Usiongee juu ya Uhuru na Raila. They don't concern you at all at all. Hata wakuhusu hata wakujua. None of them die to pay for your sins. Hakuna mwenye alikufia kulipia dhambi zake. Talk about Jesus. Ongea juu ya Yesu. The economy is bad. Uchumi ni mbaya. Talk about Jesus. Sema Yesu. Amen. Look at those two men. Angalia watu wao frustrated. Wamekuwa na shida. But their Lord has been crucified on the cross. Kwa sababu bwana wao amewekwa msalabani ameuwa. And they saw him getting buried. Walimuona amesikwa amekufa. They have given up. Wamechoka. They are going home. Wanaenda nyumbani. What are they talking about? Wanaongea juu ya nini? The name of Jesus. That's what we need to do. Hiyo ndio kitu inafahamu tu. Whatever you are doing, whatever you are, popote ulipo. Whatever the circumstances, ali gani? Talk about Jesus. Ongea tu kuhusu Yesu peke yake. He's your only message. Hii ndio ujumbe wako tu peke yake. Hakuna nyingine. You have no other message. Hakuna ujumbe mwingine uko nayo. Don't talk about the maze. Wacha kuongea juu ya mahindi. Jesus can fix the maze issue. Yesu anaweza kuingiza hapa mahindi kuwe mzuri. Paul says I'm a data. Bwana anasema niko na deni. You all people, we all here all people. Sisi wote hapa tuna madeni ya watu. Why don't we say we are debtors? Tumesema tuko na madeni. Okay, what do you owe? Una una deni ya What do you owe? The gospel. Sisi ndio deni. Lazima tulipe. All people, all kinds of people. Kuwa na deni ya watu ya injili. The educated wale wamesoma the uneducated wenye wajasoma the civilized wale wamewacivilize wenye wana maendeleo criminals wale wamabilionaires moral people wenye wana all of them wote religious people watu wa kidini all of them wote with the catholics wa katoliki you owe them the gospel na deni ya kuwapea injili they need to lift the eyes from mary watoe macho yao kutoka kwa maria to jesus christ waweke kwa yesu you owe them wewe uko na deni. Wewe ndio shout ama data. Si useme niko na deni. In verse 15, verse 15, he says, so as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Asema kwa hiyo kwa upande wangu mimi tayari kuhubiri njiri hata kwenu ninyi mlaokao Rome. So Paul is saying, Paulo anasema, I am not only a data. Mimi tu si na deni. I am also ready. Niko tayari pia. Praise the Lord. Bwana sifiwe. So we are debtors. Tuna deni. And we are 
ready na pia tuko tayari ready to preach the gospel uko tayari kuhubiri njili you know these days if you tell people to preach the gospel unajua sasa hivi ukiambia watu wahubiri njili siku hizi if you invite a man utakaribisha mtu those of us who call ourselves bishop ambao tunajiita maskofu they'll ask you how many people are in attendance anakuuliza watu wangu wangapi wanakuja you say, you say bishop i'm expecting about 30 50 people natarajia watu 30 40 hivi ama msingi say sorry i have another engagement sasa kwanza niko na mahali pengine naenda Eh they want 500 eh. Wanataka watu 500 kwa njia. Then you say even the Lord has given me a message for them. Sasa nasema wanasema Mungu amenipa uchumba wa watu 500 hao. But we are debtors. Lakini tuko na deni. I think this bishop I was telling yesterday even if it's just five people. Hata yeah. nilikuwa naambia askofu hata watu wakuja watano. I'll still preach the same message. Ujumbe ni ule ule tutahubiri. You can never excite me with many people. Hawezi kunisisimua na watu wengi. Or frustrate me with a few people. Ama uniumize na watu wachache. Every Sunday when I go to church to preach. Kila Jumapili nikaenda kanisani kuhubiri. The only person I'm sure will come is my wife. Yule mtu ambaye najua huyu hata kosa kanisa ni mke wangu. And if she comes na kikuja sits there kaapa, I will preach the gospel Itabubiria injiri <laughs> Because I'm a data Bale niko na deni And every opportunity God gives me Ni kila nafasi I must pay this debt Lazima nilipe hii deni By the even my own wife Kwanza mke wangu mwenyewe When she wants to speak to me spiritual matters she says pastor can I speak to you Mke wangu akitaka kuongea mambo ya kuasema mchungaji naweza ongea na wewe There's a man who was saying I have many names depending on the default setting kwa mtu anasema nilikuwa na majina mengi inategemea na imepangi ni wapi Sometimes she relates to me as a husband says darling can I talk to you Sasa ngine ananiambia mume wangu mpenzi when the default na... setting changes in, in, hali sasa imebadilika hapo If it's spiritual matter she comes with pastor Vitu vya kiroho ananiita mchungaji wangu When it is things to do with our other life Ikuwa ni maisha yengine darling mpenzi We are ready Tuko tayari Amen Amina. Let me introduce verse 16 and 17. Hebu mzari wa 16 na 17. Then we will come back to it later. Alafu tutarudia baadaye. The Bible says for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Anasema kwa maana zione injili ya Yesu. Just hold on there. Do you know in verse 1 it was called the gospel of God? Unajua mstari wa kwanza alisema injili ya Mungu? Now it's being called the gospel of Christ. Sasa hapa 16 nasema injili ya Kristo. It's the same thing. Ni kitu ile ile. Because Jesus is God. Maana Yesu ni Mungu. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Maana sione haya injili ya Kristo. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Kwa sababu ni uwezo wa Mungu uleta uokofu kwa yule aminie. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. Wayahudi kwanza na kwa Yunani pia. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as is written the just shall live by faith. Kwa maana haki ya Mungu imedhihirishwa ndani yake toka imani hadi imani kwa ile vyoandikwa mwenye haki ataishi kwa imani. This is big. Ni kubwa and we will spend a lot of time there. Tutachukua muda mrefu hapa. Now Paul says I'm not ashamed. There are two reasons why Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Sababu mbili inafanya Paul aionee haya injili. Because kwa sababu it works. Inafanya kazi. Praise be to Jesus. Bwana asifiwe. It works. Inafanya kazi. You know if I stand here, najua nikisimama hapa and say if you give me 10,000 shillings each, ukinipa ile 10,000 kila moja hapa. 3 months from today. Miezi mitatu kuanzia leo you will be driving a car. Utakuwa mnaendesha magari. After 3 months, baada ya miezi mitatu I must come up with something else. Nikuja na kitu kingine ya kuwekea. You didn't believe. Au kuamini kuume. Your faith. Si imani yako ni Because those kinds of prophecies, unabii kama huo, you can be ashamed of them. Unaweza aibikia. They don't work. Haifanyi kazi. But when it is the gospel lakini ikikuja kwa injili whatever the gospel promises chochote injili na aidi the gospel delivers injili upeana the gospel will never promise you something it cannot deliver injili haiwezi aidi kitu ambayo itapeana are you writing your notes unaandika mahali right whatever the gospel promises the gospel delivers andika chochote injili na aidi upeana it makes sense it works inafanya kazi it is real ni ya ukweli that's the first reason Yeye ni sababu ya kwamba Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Ambapo Paul anasema sionei haya injili. The second reason. Ya pili ni hii. Paul has gone through a lot of suffering. Paulo amepitia mateso mengi. A lot of suffering. Mengi sana. Imprisonment. Kuwekwa gerezani, shipwrecks. Kupata ajali katika meli. I look at Apostle Paul. Mtume Paulo preaching the gospel in Jerusalem. Anahubiri nje ya Yerusalemu and he is stoned. Anapigwa mbao. Almost to death. Karibu afe. He is rescued by women. Anachukuliwa na wanawake. Thrown through a basket. Anatupwa kwa vikapu. You know the baskets. Unajua vikapu? Like those ones that used to serve food during the times of Jesus. Ambazo walikuwa wanatumia kupeana vyakula siku za Yesu. A man is squeezed inside. Mtu anawekwa ndani and thrown away. Anatupwa because of the gospel. Kwa sababu ya injili. I see Paul. 
Naona Paulo preaching the gospel in Macedonia. Macedonia and is arrested. Alafu anashikwa. Put in prison. Alikuwa garisani. Because of the gospel. Sababu ya injili. I see him on the waters. Namuona kwa maji. Shipwrecked. Many men on his way to Rome. Akaenda kuhubiri wa Rome. I see him in prison in chains. Naona garisani amewekwa nyororo. I see him naked. Anaona akiwa uchi. The day he was crying. Kuna wakati alikuwa anaiga. Someone tell uh, John Mark. Ambia yohana Mark. To bring me that jacket. Aletele koti. It is winter. Ni baridi. The servant of God is naked. Mtumishi wa Mungu akoshi. He wants his jacket. Anataka jacket. No one cares for him. Hakuna na mchali. There's a time the church of Philip kuna wakati katika wa Filipi sends Epaphroditus to take him food the servant of God is hungry but in all that situation he says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ what he's saying the gospel sustains me through all changing circumstances injili inalinda mpaka hali zote za maisha mpaka mwisho the gospel sustains injili inalinda even in a hostile environment hata katika mahali pasipopasu in lack in mahali ya kuwa times of famine wakati wa njaku in nakedness wakati wa uchi the gospel sustains injili inachunga and paul says paul anasema because the gospel never promises what it cannot supply kwa sababu injili haiwezi aidi kile because the gospel sustains injili inachunga i'm not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ praise god bwana sifiwe you know there are many servants of god unajua kuna watumishi wa mungu wengi who cannot carry a bible like this is a shame one ni aibu there are many believers in your church kuna waumini wengi kanisani mwao if you met them in town ukikutana nao mjini and says praise god sema bwana sifiwe it's okay it's okay pastor it's our pastor it's To, uh, because they cannot say praise God before people they are ashamed of Jesus Christ there are many people who come to church on Sunday if you go where they stay they say I'm looking for a sister from our church here they will tell you there's nobody because she has never testified that she believes in Christ Jesus she's ashamed of the gospel but me and you need to know we are not ashamed of the gospel we can stand anywhere even in the city center and shout on the top of our voice about our Jesus Christ we are not ashamed so Paul says I'm not ashamed now hear this for in that gospel there is the power of God to salvation many people are looking for power and now most pastors are going to magicians to look for power I'm saying what I know I have been approached several times. I have been told man of God you have a wonderful message. But you, you need many people. When you do your hand like this they dance with your hands. We can take you to a place. They will treat you. I have been approached personally. When you see things happening outside there, don't assume they are things of God. Even Moses and Joshua they were coming back to the tent they had worship that they had never had before singing and dancing that they had never had before when they approached closer men and women were dancing for a calf that you are the God who removed us from Egypt a God they can see a God they can touch that is why the God of heaven is not fashionable in our churches anymore people want the God of anointing oil the God of handkerchiefs the God of brooms He is the one who makes sense right now in churches. But me and you can we preach the true God. And say we are not ashamed. We are not ashamed. Praise be to Jesus. So Paul says, I'm not ashamed. Because the power of God is found in the gospel. I hope you heard me. The power of God is not in Mount Elgon. It's in the gospel. And he says, something else is in the gospel. The righteousness of God. Praise be to Jesus. The righteousness of God. Now we are coming back 
Tunarudi to talk about these two things. The power of God and the righteousness of God found in the gospel. God bless you.